Welcome back to my bench. Today we're going to take a look at the Digiprog 3. This is a mileage adjustment tool. Now I fix a lot of clusters and sometimes you run into clusters that either can't be fixed or a customer had say already gone to a junkyard and did a swap and they needed the old cluster back as a core. So now they need the mileage of the new cluster to match what the vehicle actually is. And this is a tool that you would uh, could use to do that. Uh, so to start with, I want to talk about the touch screen a little bit. Password is default one. Touch screen is not what you're used to like with your smartphone. Um, it kind of sucks. Uh, you have to go slow, but you can't go too slow, otherwise it'll take it as a double click. And the screen has some dead spots. Uh, let me see if I can get into the screen test function here. I gotta remember where it's at. Uh, setup maybe. Uh, touch test, there it is. I've actually had two of these units and both of them have had dead spots in the screen. And it always seems to be right around in this corner here. Uh, not all these are from the same factory. I may have gotten one from a crappier factory. This this touch test here just leaves some crosshairs wherever your finger lands. But as you can see, it's just not registering in some areas. Sometimes if you hold your finger down for a few seconds, it'll register. But it's always in this corner here, so there might be a few buttons that you're not going to be able to access. All right, so let's let's make this thing actually do something. Uh, does it work? Yes, it works, <laughs> but barely. It's certainly full of quirks. Uh, with mileage correction, you can do it two ways. You can either do it through the OBD2 port, or some you have to do it through the uh, through the EEPROM. And to do that, you have to remove the EEPROM from the board. So here I already have an EEPROM that's been removed. I just need to insert it in uh, the clip. Pin one is your red lead here. Okay, let's see if we can read this. Actually, before you even read, what you should do is, is do a backup. So here we have a button that's not registering. I can't even arrow down. There it goes. Okay. Uh, 9502 is a style VPROM. I'm using the correct plug, plug one of two, which really isn't right because it came with many plugs. But we'll just go ahead and let it read. Okay. Um, I think it may have actually read correctly this time. Sometimes if it doesn't read correctly, instead of just saying connection error or something like that, it'll just come up with some large random number that is different for each model of vehicle. It took me a while to figure out what the heck was going on, but let's just let's program this for a hundred thousand miles. It's gotta be in kilometers, so what we're looking for is a hundred and sixty. Oh, what the hell just happened? Oh, Stop. I guess we're starting over. Okay. Now as long as we're screwing around, I'll show you what happens when it does have a connection error. Um, I'm going to back back out again. And we're going to try the same vehicle, EEPROM again. Plug one, yes. Then watch up here for what the readout's going to be. Hmm. It's actually the exact same readout without the EEPROM as it is with the EEPROM. Hmm. Okay, well, we can ignore what it thinks it sees for now, because even though it doesn't know what it's looking at, it will still often write the correct value on the EEPROM. Let me just make sure my pinout's right again. We'll try this one more time. 
Um, okay, so we're going to try for 160. I must have accidentally hit the check mark last time I tried typing in one. Uh, the, the calibration isn't very good. And to fix the calibration, you have to have a password, and I haven't asked the seller yet what the password is, so whatever. So I'm kind of dealing with the touch screen being off calibration a little bit. So I'm trying to push nine. Oh, it double clicked. Uh, and of course, this arrow isn't going to work at all because that section of the touch screen is dead. All right, we're going to go as close as we can to our, our goal. I'm going to see if it will go ahead and write. Okay. All right, it should be done. Let's test this EEPROM and see if there's really 100,000 miles on it. Okay, so I installed the EEPROM in my testing rig. We're gonna boot it up and see, it should be close to 100,000 miles now if it worked. Okay, and it did work even though it couldn't read its own value, it actually did program. All right, so now we know the EEPROM reader section of it works. Let's try uh, adjusting mileage through the OBD, OBD port. I just want to try reading the, off this EEPROM one more time before I switch over to the OBD, T, OBD port testing. Um, so I'll make sure I get this Right orientation, and this is the EEPROM. I just put a new dump on, a new burn on. It should read 160,000 kilometers, not 270 like what it reads when it has a read error. Okay, let's see if it reads right. It read 270 again. Uh, that's not right. This thing it it can it can burn the right miles. It just can't read itself. Uh, let's let's move on. So now we're on to the OBD port testing. Originally I wanted to try testing a Chevy Impala uh, cluster which uh, that can be done through the OBD2 port. Uh, I want to hook it up, check it out, but there's not even Impala or Monte Carlo on the list under Chevy. <clears throat> so I won't be doing that for testing. I thought I'd try well Trailblazer that could also be done through the port. Uh, there is a trailblazer, but when you select it, it forces you to use the uh, EEPROM plug again. I don't see an option to use the OBD port. I don't know why they would give this to you if it's not going to use it when it can be used. See, there's, there's no way <clears throat> to change it. Um... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and, and follow through and, and select it. It's going to come up with another random large number even though it can't read anything. Yeah, it comes up with that same number. You can also go ahead and, and type in a random number uh, and go. And it's it's not going to work because it's looking for an EEPROM even though the port is hooked up. Uh, so I guess this concludes my testing. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be returning it. I just can't handle the crappy touch screen and the, the wonky readings that are never right. There are better, better programmers on the market like the old Taco Pro. Uh, these actually work when you push a button and it can actually read EEPROMs right. So I guess uh, I might have other reviews of other programmers later on. Keep your eyes out. This is it for now. 
Thanks for watching. Okay, so I thought I'd try one more time to see if I can get a good reading out of this thing. This is a completely different EEPROM. If this reads correctly, this is a 10,000 mile EEPROM. It should come up at uh, 16,000 kilometers. Okay. Orientation double checked. Pin one on the red lead. Come on, arrow button. There we go. Hmm. Came up as 80,000 kilometers, which is not right. Um, I'm going to try Avalanche again. I'm going to make sure that uh, EEPROM is seated right touching the pins. There, it worked. <laughs> it actually read the EEPROM correctly at that time. So now we know it can read, it can write. It just doesn't do anything very well. At least mine. Like I said earlier, they're not all the same. I guess there's a couple different factories that these things come out of. I'll put down in the description uh, the brand of boards that are better than others. I guess if you take them apart and look at the color of the circuit board, uh, there are some differences, but yeah. Okay, time to pack it up and send it back. Thanks for watching.